Carter here. I am trying out, this is my first actual uh, video test with my open face helmet. Uh, trying to photo vlog with it. I know that, you know, uh, full face helmets are safer, but I really, I do not like them. I, I don't know, it feels like, uh, I don't know, I, I'm not claustrophobic, but I just don't like not having that wind in my face when I ride. I, I really don't like it. So, um, I've been trying a bunch of different things. Uh, I'm trying to get a uh, bike combination that works, that didn't, uh, didn't suck real bad in the wind, and that uh, you could hear me when I talked. I literally did about maybe, I don't know, six or seven different uh, uh, mic tests where all I did was put the uh, camera in my, po in my jacket pocket, connect to the microphone, and, and just listen to the audio, um, when, or record it with just the audio, and then just listen to it when I got back home. And um, the test 
Sprouts. Like this is, we're on Illinois 2, which turns into Indiana 2, which is convenient. And there just aren't a lot of cars on this road. Uh, there, you know, it does lead to a town called Beecher, which isn't a big town, but it's not, you know, population like 200 small. But once you get past Beecher, US 2, or State 2, is very lightly traveled. And it's a, it's a pretty decent road as far as road quality. So we take it a lot. By the way, uh, once again, Jimmy's riding in front of me. So you, you just have to find routes like that, like this, where there's not a lot of people on them, so you minimize anxiety over uh, getting hit and hopefully as long as you don't live in a crap area of the United States like I do you find roads that have at least some nice scenery there are spots uh, depending on you wh where you live I know down in Tennessee by where Deals Gap is every gas station actually has a map that you can get for free of different motorcycle roads to take, which is makes me insanely jealous because they have so many and I have none. But you know what the hell? Um, so you have that, but if you don't live there or you don't live someplace where you have a lot of great motorcycle roads, you're gonna have to do what uh, my friends and I have done, and that's you're gonna have to go exploring. Uh, sometimes you end up finding a gem, sometimes you end up finding a, a bust, and you're like, well, I'll never take this road again. Uh, there's times where I had my GPS on, and I was like, oh, this, well, this road should cut through here, and this should be good, and then the road turned out to be gravel. And there was no place to turn around, so on my big honk and Harley touring bike, I rode on gravel for about five miles. And of course, it wasn't just a smooth gravel road. There were bumps in the way. So, you know, you make the mental note. Uh, don't ever do that again. But I mean, that's part of the adventure of uh, riding motorcycles. You know, sometimes you... Sometimes you find a gem and sometimes you find a turd. site to go to actually is um, and if you don't own a Harley Harley's Ride Planner website has a bunch of public routes made by riders who have posted those sites on there or those routes on there and uh, you know if you have a Harley or you have a, a GPS device that you can download videos or a GPX files to you can download those routes you can, and put them on, you know, whatever device you have, and you can follow the route exactly. I know uh, Indian, uh, I don't remember if it was in this last update to the Ride Command or the one before it, actually added the ability to upload GPX files, which was really nice. Kind of uh, puts them on more par with Harley, so... It even makes my decision even harder as to which bike I'm going to get next. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do at this point. Um, I kind of want. I kind of want to see Via Limited, but on the other hand, I saw videos of the new Roadmaster Elite, and I just thought that was the one one of the most beautiful motorcycles I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I was so blown away by all the little nuances with the, the custom badging, the incredible paint job that's on there, all the little features, um, the little tweaks they did, like they changed the, the handlebar controls for this year. Well, they did that on all their touring bikes because the old handlebar controls were kind of a holdover from victory and they weren't the best controls on the planet. They kind of sucked. So they, they went back and redid those for this year. And it just... And 
I'm definitely going to get a Harley. I'm definitely going to get the CPO. And then as soon as I make up my mind that way, Indian sucks me right back in. So I still got about seven or eight months to think about it. Because I'm not going to buy anything until next spring. But I really, uh, I really like that Indian. And I don't know if anybody knows that anybody in Hartley who watches my humble videos, but I will say uh, the Harley Davidson dealership I go to, Calumet Harley in Munster, Indiana, is really the biggest uh, selling point for me getting a new Harley. I don't know how it is with other motorcycle manufacturers or even other, other Harley dealerships, but the people at Calumet Harley, have, they know me by name, um, they treat me really well there, and I've kind of grown accustomed to that, so if I decided that I was going to switch manufacturers, I would lose that dealership experience, which to me is a huge selling point when it comes time to buy a motorcycle. Now, there is the flip side of that, and that is I have plans to move south in a couple of years, so really how relevant is it to buy my next motorcycle at Cayman 